Beatty. Uh, I work for the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies. I'm a, a faculty associate there. Hi, I'm Caitlin Iverson. I'm a graduate student at the Nelson Institute, and I also work at Design Lab. Has anybody heard of Design Lab? Everybody gets that. Okay, so just for those of you who don't, um, we can talk more about how the Design Lab can help instructors um, later on. But for students, we're like um, the writing center for media projects, anything from working with um, student coursework on videos, um, infographics, and maps to their professional development research presentations, posters, and human resumes. And because they're such an awesome resource, that's how I ended up um, working with Caitlin, in addition to the fact that she works in the, in the Nelson Institute uh, for Environmental Studies. So um, let me start uh, our story by talking about the program that we're working in. So I teach in a, uh, an accelerated master, professional master's program called the Environmental Conservation Program. And it's you know a couple semesters on campus, a semester online, a professional placement, and they are ready for the world. And that's how the program works. And one of the things that we want to teach these, these environmental conservation professionals is how to tell their sometimes very complicated scientific stories to a broader public. So we have an assignment, uh, and it's actually going on this semester in, in this version of the class, where we ask them to put together a three minute presentation, uh, usually a PowerPoint, but with recorded audio, and then um, we ask them to, to to work on it with one another. Um, and Kate, that's where Caitlin comes in. She explains to people how to uh, improve their, the quality of their work. So we thought we'd start off with a success story. And I don't know if it'll work if I just press play. Probably not. Mostly because it's. Yeah, it's opening Safari. Yeah. So. Okay, so let me just go back into our tab, right? Yep. So there, which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> That was supposed to be a seamless transition. Just pretend yes. it was. <laughs> there, are, there are no seamless transitions. They are. Um, it is embedded in Kaltura, which is why you can't do that through PowerPoint because of the blocked uh, access. So, so we thought we'd start off with a success story. Um, and so the students are supposed to talk about their goal, um, who their <coughs> audience is, and um, and then again through the presentation. I think it was in this yeah, yeah, course. Yeah, Here we go. Sustainable fishing. So, so this is an example of uh, <coughs> one of the things that the students did. Welcome to the short presentation on fish consumption. Throughout this video, I hope to inform you of the world of commercial fishing and how to make the best choice when purchasing seafood for home, because all living creatures depend on it. I'm Lauren Leckby. This is Plenty of Fish in the Sea. Where are all the fish? Currently, global population status stands at 85% as overfished, while only 15% is stable. What this means is that 85% of global stocks have been harvested beyond their reproductive threshold. Unlike many animals, fish need to be in large groups to successfully reproduce and grow. But too often, fish stocks are overharvested, threatening the species' survival long term. This is often a tragedy that comments. As you add more fishermen and more boats, the fish population starts to decline. As the boats continue to grow, the fish continue to decrease. And eventually, all of the fish from that stock disappear. The common adage of give a man a fish no longer applies. Because if you give a man a fish, he may eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he may eat for his lifetime. But if you overfish, soon no one eats. This is a real concern because one billion people around the world depend on fish as a food source to survive. One billion people. That's one in every seven people depend on fish to live. The U.S. commercial fishing industry harvests 4.7 billion pounds of fish each year. Of that 4.7 billion pounds, 2.3 billion pounds goes to waste. So what is caught and not needed does not get released. Of that 2.3 billion pounds, 16% is wasted in the distribution process, 51% is consumer waste, and 32% of it is bycatch. What is bycatch? Bycatch is the incidental capture of non-target species. This can include whales, dolphins, sea turtles, seals, sharks, and even seabirds. What can you do to help? You can make a choice. Look for these labels and others 
on the seafood that you're purchasing in the supermarket. Look for the stoplight. Green means go, yellow means proceed with caution, and red means avoid at all costs. And if you can't find one of these labels, or you prefer to go onto your phone, Seafood Watch has a website you can log in and search for any type of seafood that you want to buy and find out what its status is. And if you take, a, take action and make a choice, pretty soon the fish populations will remain stable and healthy for many years to come. Because people depend on it, and most importantly, these guys depend on it. So pay that extra dollar for sustainably caught seafood, or these magnificent creatures will pay with their lives. So there's uh, one of our students' presentations. This is a student, by the way, uh, uh, whose idea of a present bullet was uh, a PowerPoint presentation before was bullet points and things like that. So uh, Caitlin actually came to class and, well, actually, it was, you did more than just come to class, right? Did the... So we, we got together a couple times to think about how many technical snafus can students have when first creating a presentation, then posting it online, then making the, or creating the PowerPoint, and then making it a movie, then posting it online, then providing peer feedback, like where, and, and, and then, and where can we do this, and, um, and so yeah, so first thing we thought of is just how to make the movie, how to make, you know, so make your presentation, and make the movie, um, and so I provided a couple online um, tutorials on how to, it's kind of meta, how, how to make an online presentation online. <laughs> But now we'll get into the, what so, we wanted, what we tried. Yeah, so there was an effective presentation. and But one of the things that we wanted, and that, that um, Caitlin was pretty good about explaining to people, is that you, in addition to sort of doing a good first cut, you need to think about your audience, and then you need to get feedback from people about whether you've effectively reached that audience. So our key concern with being able to post these things in, the, in Desire to Learn uh, and hear from the students was, how do we get them to give one another feedback? And we did this the first time two years ago, and I don't know if any of you were using uh, Desire to Learn two years ago, but you could not post videos in Desire to Learn. You, the files were too large, and there was no there was no Carl Tura to sort of allow you to view them in line. So uh, what was our solution? solution? We talked to people at uh, the Division of Continuing Studies who were helping us with this, and they said, wow, you know, you can, you can use Box. Box is great. So you can, uh, but it turns out that in order to allow people to comment on things in Box, you have to give them collaborator permissions, which essentially means that they could delete one another's videos, they could do anything. Emily's here, so she was helping us to, uh, to figure these, some of these things out. So we had to give all 25 students in the class uh, you know, these sort of high-level permissions. And it worked out okay. You can see here that you know they've got comments on the side of the video, and the video uh, you know will generate a preview, and they'll be able to view it in line, and then put the comments there. But uh, this essentially, to do this, they had to bounce out of Desire to Learn the comment section. They had to make the comments here. We had to go and look at Box to make sure that all the students had done what they were supposed to do. So it was it was uh, not an ideal circumstance. So uh, if we fast forward uh, a year, Mark, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you go to the second slide. Yeah. That one says what we tried. Okay. Hey, look. <laughs> what did we try? <laughs> um, so here's what we tried. We went to Box. That's the problem. It bounces out of Learn VW. Files were too large. Um, so this was challenging. So we wanted to do something um, with in Desire to Learn. Uh, so we were able, with Kaltura, to uh, teach students how to post their videos in line in a discussion section uh, of the class and then comment to one another. Um, I will say that the students struggled still with posting the videos. Uh, in order to use Desire to Learn or, or use Kaltura within Desire to Learn, there was a lot of click, non-intuitive clicking involved, and some students still couldn't do it. They still 
Um, luckily, the, the uh, file size was increased so they could post their videos as a file, but then some students still had to download the file and do it offline. And so it was, it was quite challenging. Um, but but the, I think the one thing that's um, pretty clear is we did get students to look at one of those videos and give direct feedback. And that's really um, the overall goal of this is, whoops. So the next example we're going to show you is just a little quick, just a 30 second snippet of, of the first posting of the video. And then they get the um, student got some great feedback. And then we'll give you the 30 seconds of how they change that. Once it comes up. Once it comes <laughs> up. These are, uh, there's lots of bouncing around. I so. will say, just while you're pulling that up, is the, the issue that is still sort of present in this is that when you click on one of the, I think it's the word, like that. Yeah. When you click on something and you're looking at the, um, the comments, every single time it pops up with the, um, you see the, you want to scroll through. So if you, if you go down, right? So each time you see her video again. So like each time yeah. her video pops up. Yeah? How so do you, how there's do you that, there's a, there is a setting within Desire to Learn that you can use to change that. Basically, uh, I just spent the past two years on an online program that was taught in Leeds Well. Uh, one of the teachers actually gave less points to the students who left that setting off. Because <laughs> one of the first assignments is to turn that setting off. Yeah. Especially if you have courses that are heavily driven by discussion, right. all of a sudden your discussion posts get to be about this long. Right. So <laughs> it's a setting that basically, by default, is set that says include previous posts in my response. Yep. You turn it off, and it doesn't do this, and, okay. and then you we, chastise your students if they move it off. We tried <laughs> to explain that to students several times, but again, yeah. we were talking beforehand about the technical, technical, technical ability technical. that you yeah. assume students have. Some of them just couldn't master it. So here's, here's a video uh, in the draft version. And I just we're just going to play a few seconds of it. Bring in Fibians because their numbers got two got two line account. Here is our area of concern. Highway 49 is up in the northern edge of Horicon National Wildlife Refuge. The satellite image in the upper right hand corner shows the 2.5 mile section of highway that crosses the marsh and the corresponding mile markers. The graph below shows the number and species of birds killed within each mile marker. So you can mile really tell what her feedback is going to be because the height too much on one slide, <laughs> um, which is basically what the feedback was, right? Yeah. Way too much on one slide. The graphs are too small when you put it all on one thing like that. Yeah. You can see, um, oops. So uh, we can read this. Uh, nice presentation, blah, blah, blah. The only thing I would suggest is the size of the maps are too small. This might be different if, if it weren't on Learn at UW. So they were like, because they were looking at the little, the little video. They also weren't using the button of yeah. March. <laughs> March. So there, there are many, uh, <coughs> many different things. But there's a, a final version of this, and we'll just show it to you just so that you can um, see, the see, the, see the change here. Uh, it's, <laughs> Stewart, and I'm here to talk about reducing on. waterfowl mortalities on Highway 49, not counting spring amphibians because their numbers got too high to count. This is our area of concern. Highway 49 is located at the northern edge of the refuge. This graph shows the top five species of bird killed along the road. For each mile marker along the two point three miles section of road, the graph records the number of individuals killed. The most fatalities are seen between mile markers 1.0 and 1.8. This map shows why. It is where two bodies of water line up and waterfall across the road to get between both of them.
this pie graph. So you can see, obviously, it, you know, um, and, and we were talking about this before with John about how there's a, your your term of peer performance. So the whole reason for this opportunity for engagement and um, providing feedback is because people do better when they know that they're going to have somebody comment and <laughs> and provide feedback. And, and across the board, every time I see students engage with it, each other's content, the bar just levels up. Um, and so that was what um, basically we wanted to do with this. Yeah. And, and this is just one example, but virtually every, every presentation was improved with sometimes small, but sometimes large changes like this. And the only way we could really do that was by having the, ha sort of avoiding this bouncing in and out of different systems, but instead having the videos right there for people to um, use. So uh, that's our story of what we did and, and how we did it. Cultura absolutely helped us do it. We're now moving into the brave new world of using Canvas, which we never used before. And uh, it, Kaltura does exist within Canvas discussions, and you can use it. Um, we wanted to show you a, an example of putting a video into desire to learn using Kaltura, but that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, you can do it, but you have to do it in the manual fraction. Yeah. Right. So, um, so we won't show you that. Um, but um, we I can. I what we're supposed to do Q&A. All right, yeah, go ahead. <laughs>